Hi, so this video is to go over how to do the life cycle assessment for ENB 430. So this video will cover the inventory analysis and go into a little bit of number two on your uh, inventory and impact assignment homework. And then another video will go over the impact analysis. Uh, and so basically what the LCA is, is it contains a few different parts to it. And so uh, the goal and scope definition is basically what about your product are you really looking at? Um, what in what aspects of uh, where do you want to get the information? Uh, that kind of thing. Inventory analysis is really what goes into the product and what goes into the stuff that goes into your product. So we'll get into that uh, in detail here shortly. And then the impact assessment is what aspect of the inventory can cause or within the manufacture of the product can cause an, a problem with the environment of all different types. Interpretation is really looking at uh, how the data is compiled and what it actually means. So we're not going to get into this for the course, um, but it is an important part when you kind of take the next step. And so within an inventory analysis, there's five main stages, and so there's, the names will change based on kind of your source, but the five we're going to really focus on and name for this course uh, include material extraction, so the raw materials and how getting that out of the ground, manufacturing packaging, what goes into the product and packaging of that, distribution, getting that product from the factory to retailers or to you, use, what goes into the use and maintenance of the product and end of life. Uh, where is that product going to go and what's involved with that? And so the second uh, really phase we're going to really focus on is impact assessment. And so this includes uh, a couple different aspects, how it impacts the environment. We're going to kind of break it down into three different stages. Ecological systems degradation. So this involves how um, the things actually degrade the ecosystem or water quality, air quality, that kind of thing. Resource depletion is what's involved with the manufacturer or use of the product that depletes natural resources uh, and, and that kind of thing. And then human health and welfare. So is an aspect of the product bad for human health or an aspect of the production of that product? So we'll go for it into each of these uh, shortly. And so the goals of life cycle assessment in general um, are really what goes into a product, nailing, it, nailing down the details. And so for this class, we're going to really focus on the inventory analysis uh, and start to tease apart what goes into that product. And the second goal is really to determine how the inventory affects the environment. And so Again, what is the inventory impacts on ecological system degradation in, in those stages? And then the third thing we're really going to focus on here is to begin to quantify the inventory and impacts, looking at how professionals actually use aspects of an inventory analysis, move into the impact analysis, uh, and then really put some numbers behind all of what they're talking about. And so for the inventory analysis, the first thing you really need to do is choose what's called your functional unit. And this is kind of just standardize what you're talking about. So you can compare, uh, you know, one pair of shoes, if that's your product, you're not going to compare uh, one shoe. And then when your competitors do it, you're going to compare your one shoe to their two pairs of shoes, to their two shoes. So you really need to kind of standardize what uh, a useful product is. Uh, and so it can be a set of products, it can be one product. So when you look at it, again, one pair of shoes is kind of the standard. You can think of maybe one pallet of shoes or one large distribution um, part of your product. Uh, you can also think of maybe one K-cup. It's one use, but do you really go out and buy just one K-cup at a time? You usually buy it in 24 count. So depends on what your goal is for your LCA, you might choose your one or you might choose your 24. Uh, again, your Morton salt here, you might choose uh, one pound, you might choose 10 pounds, depends on really what you're going for. So that's a, this is kind of your choice. 
uh, and it comes down to what the product is useful for and what your goal is in your LCA. Uh, and there's a few other things to kind of keep in mind when we're talking about uh, the inventory analysis and that's types of raw materials and so we're going to focus on direct materials as actually part of your product so something that's you actually see it when you hold the product or you at least know that it's there indirect uses or indirect aspects of raw materials are we need to use that material to produce the product so it may not be held in our hand when we use the product but it's needed to actually produce it uh, and then another aspect of this is what is needed to maintain the materials, either maintain the direct materials or maintain the indirect materials. And so these, this kind of aspect can be an indirect material by itself. So we'll get into some of these uh, here shortly. And so again, what we're going to focus on here is the inventory analysis and go through each of these five steps. So for material extraction, the questions you're really asking yourself are, what are my raw ingredients? What is needed to maintain these raw ingredients? So maintaining can be fertilizers, um, land, um, machines of other sorts. Um, and so when you're talking about manufacture and packaging of that product, the question, the main question is what is needed to make and package the product? So are you producing any waste material? Uh, what actually goes into this product? Uh, what goes into packaging and actually getting that product to the consumer. Uh, what emissions are produced during this? What energy is produced and used during this? And the distribution stage really looks at what is needed to distribute the product after it leaves the factory. So think about equipment to move it. Is it traveling by airplane or truck? So you need an airplane and you need a truck. Uh, the distance, is it traveling a large distance or a small distance? That's going to affect how much gasoline you use, whether you need roads, uh, storage, does this product need to be stored for a long period of time, does it need refrigeration, uh, and retailers, what kind of retailers are being, uh, use this product and sell this product to you, and what do they need, um, lights, they need labor, um, lots of different aspects go into each of these. For use, what is needed to use this product? So for boots, you don't need to plug it in, but many products you do, and so energy, is really needed to or could be needed for certain aspects of products. Maintenance, what goes into maintaining your product? Does it use parts? Do you need to clean it? Do you need to wash it? So those are aspects that would be involved in use. Uh, and then emissions, does it produce something? Does it impact the air quality or water quality during its natural normal use? So end of life is what is needed to get the product from where it is used to its final resting place. So think uh, energy of transport, so you need a transport container. Um, boots usually, or trash, just usually isn't thrown randomly in a, in a large dumpster. It usually is contained in a bag. Then you have equipment, what's needed to move that trash to the large waste receptacle. Uh, maintenance of waste, if you're going to throw it in the landfill, you're probably going to have to turn that landfill over. Um, so you might need large dump trucks, you might need um, large earth movers, uh, if parts of your product can be composted or recycled, different aspects are needed for those as well. So now we're going to go through one pair of boots. And so how I usually start this is I start with the manufacturer and packaging. And so for I actually physically look at my, look at my product. And so for a pair of boots, uh, I need leather, uh, I need shoelaces, and so here I'm using leather as my shoelaces. Uh, these pair of boots have a nice cotton lining, and so cotton is needed to kind of do the inside. If it's a synthetic lining, what's involved in, in, in the synthetic lining? Um, boots have soles, so these are made out of rubber or plastic, depends on what type you're using. Glue or thread to attach the sole to the boot itself. A buckle is here, brass for the shoelace holes. Um, you also need a uh, cardboard box to package it, paper usually to wrap the, the boot within it, and uh, usually a plastic bag for transport. So these are kind of my brainstorming ideas around what goes into this product. I then go from manufacturing to material extraction. And so where does leather come from? Leather comes from cows or pigs. Um, and so you put cow there because you need to actually grow that to produce the leather. 
where does cotton come from? Cotton comes from plants, so you need to grow the plants itself. Rubber comes from plants as well. Uh, brass comes from uh, an alloy of copper and zinc, so you need both of those metals, and therefore you need to mine both of those metals. Chemicals are needed to tan the hides from the animals, uh, and these are usually chromium or some other chemicals. Uh, energy always basically is involved in each of these stages, usually uh, to move people, to move items back and forth. So you can put energy in almost every category. Uh, and another thing, kind of the indirect aspects that we were talking about in one of the previous slides. So indirectly, what do you need to grow a cow? Uh, you need land, you need food, uh, you need place to grow that food, uh, plants, usually fertilizer, and so you can see where this gets really indirect depending on what you're really interested in. And so for this here though, this is kind of my, my main point around uh, material extraction. So then I go to distribution. What is, and so for distribution, what we need to do is get that product from the factory to you. And so what's needed are larger box, shoes are, or boots aren't, um, just transported by themselves. You have energy to move that, uh, gasoline to, uh, to fuel the trucks. You need trucks. Uh, you can also include other things such as labor. Um, again, you can go down a rabbit hole with those. And then for use, you can think of what's involved with the maintenance and use of that actual product. And so for, for boots, it's a little difficult, I'll, I'll admit. Uh, if, for, if you're maintaining these for long term, a nice leather polish, uh, some more leather shoelaces might work, um, maybe more rubber soles, depends on what you're uh, really using them for, uh, and then a wipe cloth probably for the polish. So you can get really specific if you start really thinking about the actual use of that product. End of life, what's needed to, to take that product from where you're using it to its final resting place? So plastic bag, trash bag, a truck, gasoline to fuel that truck, um, different types of energy. Um, there's other types of emissions within this and um, energy is kind of a large broad category for this. And so if you go back to the assignment, you can see I asked for three items in each stage and at least 20 total items. And so looking here, I have three items in each stage at least. So here I have four, three, four. So if you count them all up, uh, there are at least 20 items. And it's good to have more than 20 because if you're not really quite explaining things well, the instructor might not grade it as, uh, as one individual item. So I would go a little over or try to explain it pretty well. And so for the uh, number two on the homework assignment, you want to look at the research impact uh, of five of these. And so you want to pick some that are direct use of your product. And so kind of these are the best ones to start with. So leather would probably be good, rubber soles, uh, maybe buckle or uh, shoelace holes. And so this is the whole point of going from your inventory to how to sustainably design a, pro a better product. So you don't want to use something that's un not within your control. You're most likely controlling the manufacturing and packaging. So let's focus on researching these items to figure out what's within your um, sphere of influence.